Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a bush biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower card catfishes, which are also known as plecos, whiptail catfishes, ottos, otocinclus, um, etc. within the aquarium trade. And today I'm going to talk about perhaps a topic that isn't seen as controversial, but maybe needs a little bit more thought again. So previously I talked about nitrates, and today I'm actually going to talk about tannins and botanicals within the aquarium. And this is kind of becoming a really big topic, particularly just black water in general, as people want to find maybe something a little bit more natural for their aquarium. But are they actually understanding what is natural and what is kind of like natural for only certain freshwater ecosystems? So firstly, I should clarify, what is black water? Black water is habitats that are deeply stained with something known as tannins, also known as tannoids or tannic acids. So typically or most commonly, they are lower in pH conductivity and conditions like that. But less known is there are actually harder water and maybe more brackish blackwater habitat such as in Florida where it potentially is the amount of um, tannins introduced allow for blackwater in these harder water habitats. So as anyone will know if they've tried to create blackwater it's a, it's a lot more difficult if you have a harder water setup but it's not impossible and it just depends on the tannins. It's the same as what makes tea stained. This is also tannins. So if you've got hard water, you can still stain it, it just takes a lot more. Typically black water habitats are quite niche with their geology to allow for the tannins to travel kind of just into the water. It's not all about leaf litter in the water. It's kind of a little bit varied depending on the actual ecosystem. But it's not kind of one simple thing and it does kind of rely on a set amount of circumstances. And this also comes into the misbelief that botanicals are found in all freshwater habitats. That's not true, it depends on a whole range of set conditions. A big misconception is that black water is pretty common and that it, uh, much of like South America or Southeast Asia is black water. And this isn't true. If we look at a map of South America, you can clearly see that there are areas which are black water and areas are not. It depends on the geology, the geography and just factors like that. But there are many natural habitats which are clear water or white water. And also you'll get habitats that might look black water, but it's not actual black water. It's more that they've got their high turbidity and the turbidity is likely caused by something like sediment build up or um, it's a kind of a turbulent or a maybe tidal stream where that just sediment is being kicked up a lot and these can be a little bit more common and you've also got turbid environments due to algae um, but they're usually connected to pollution events but it's a real myth that a lot of freshwater fishes are found in black water. It really varies and even one species can be found in the different habitats or different water conditions. So discus and visodon, they're the um tree like the what's it the heckle symphysodon discus is typically a black water fish but I believe can be found in white water or clear water and the same goes for um, Symphysodon tarzu and Symphysodon aquafasciatus. So it really depends on the species and lorcarids, they tend to be a little bit more niche in their range, so plecos, some will be white water, some will be black water, it really depends. And there's no kind of correlations other than if it's a species that might use vegetation more, it's kind of more likely to be maybe a black water species, you can kind of assume, I guess. Uh, something like panaculus or uh, some panac, but not all panac. Um, it really just varies, so definitely, uh, if you're looking at a biotope, this is uh, kind of a real bugbear of mine. Black water isn't a biotope for fishes, you're doing, um, you're doing as much of a biotope as any normal planted aquarium kind of thing if you're not putting an actual black water fish in it. But 
what is the actual issue to Blackwater? So Blackwater is caused, as I said, by tannins, tannic acids, and these are a range of compounds released from plants. Plants have, well, a range of compounds anyway, and I'll get into them a little bit, but tannic acids kind of, as they decay, they produce these, um, or release these acids, or as they sort of sit in the water, they dissolve into the water. It's kind of almost as simple as that, I guess. So there's actually many different types of tannins and tannic acids, and they will have different relevant effects, and therefore, uh, when you're citing any studies or looking into the research on them, it really depends on which tannic acid you're talking about to the effects, but there are some sort of standardised effects with them, um, or standardised um, what they um, cause or influence. And there's several main ones which I'll go through, which are they are anti-nutrients and they are antibiotic, or antimicrobial, I guess, is a better word than antibiotic. Because let's not confuse them with antibiotics. So these two I'm going to go through a little bit. So tannins, a lot of people will state about how antimicrobial uh, they are and therefore beneficial. This does actually affect cycling within the aquarium. But the actual antimicrobial effects are kind of not understood by hobbyists and also not very well understood by scientists because there isn't that many studies that are of use to hobbyists because they'd be looking at certain concentrations in certain situations and certain tannic acids not often the ones that we're using and often much higher concentrations than we're probably putting in our tanks. So we don't really know how antimicrobial they are. And also when stating that antimicrobial in cases of disease, we, there, it's not usually that well studied in regards to particular aquarium diseases. So you can't just add these botanicals and hope it will sort out all of your um, issues with white spot or um, velvet or something like that because we don't really know and it probably won't have that much of an effect because you probably need much higher doses than you're giving. So they're not really solving that. The second thing about tannins that never gets said because I think it uh, there is this bias that tannins are good and people ignore the negative effects is that they are actually anti-nutrients and this is more regarding protein uptake. Um, tannins just reduce the amount of protein that a fish can uptake. The issue is with understanding this is it there's different effects of different tannic acids and also if you're just adding botanicals there's other sort of um, compounds that are going to have synergistic or synergistic effects or influence how this sort of um, how nutrients might be uptaken so you, it might be a little bit more difficult to understand what's just from these tannins and certain tannins. It is also worth mentioning that there's sort of two ways you can uptake tannins. One can be through the diet so anything high in plant-based uh, foods, not algae, can be high in, because algae aren't really plants, but can be high in tannins and then can also be anti-nutrients. It could also be through the water and the problem is, is the science is really limited when it comes to adding it into the water, but there is quite a lot to say about the negative effects when it's added as a diet. It is also easy to assume that if it's in the water, it is passing through the gut. Therefore, it kind of potentially makes no difference. Um, they are probably still uptaking the, the um, tannins and therefore having anti-nutrient effects. And this could be actually quite big, but we don't really know. So when we're promoting um, botanicals and tannins regardless, you, it's really difficult to ignore the fact that it's kind of just disregarding a whole aspect of these compounds in the attempt of saying they are just good for you, uh, well, good for the fish, I guess, and kind of ignoring everything else about 
tanni tannins and tannic acids that could be negative. So the other thing that when considering these compounds is it's not, especially if you're using botanicals, it's not just going to be exclusively tannins. There's also like phenols, um, that's the one I can remember off the top of my head, but there's loads of other compounds that these plants are releasing when they're breaking down. And tannins are kind of the big one. They are actually what makes some plants really toxic. But there's a whole range of other compounds to consider and we don't really know because first you have to research each individual species and then you have to think about the context. So where could, if they have a certain compound, where could it be focused? You should be focused in any dropped leaves or maybe saplings. Saplings aren't really much use to us. Woods maybe, it depends, certain trees do have certain um, compounds in the bark or um, I guess more in that sort of resin layer if you're going to add anything like that. Um, so it's a lot of we don't know and yes these compounds are likely safe uh, but do we know the long term effects? It's a little bit more complicated than just adding them because they're natural when they're probably not, or possibly not, depending on the fishes you're keeping. So one of the big things here is that while I say all these negatives, and it's because it's worth being aware of them because so often people have totally ignored the um, complexities of these, um, of just botanicals in general, and only looked at them being positive is so it is highly possible that fishes actually found in black water habitats and similar are fine with it um, or they've got adaptations to manage any negative effects there are so we can assume that quite easily what we can't can also assume is fishes that are not adapted to black water habitats and not found in black water do not have experience well they experience the negatives more than any potential positives. And some of these positives I don't think people are entirely clear on or it's just not really researched. Because I can't, uh, apart from it being more natural and antimicrobial, that's all I can really think of. And then you've also got the effects of low pH and um, conductivity. But these fishes that come from those habitats are probably adapted to it but also your fish keeping style will have to change to deal with maybe that if it does affect microbes so strongly affect it how it affects the cycle of a tank and the stability of a tank um, just from that microbial sense but it's really just keeping if your fish isn't a blackwater fish it really isn't a great idea possibly to actually keep them in the black water habitat it's not natural i don't know why it would be recommended as like something good because the whole point of black water is to do a biotope or something natural but you're not you're kind of creating um something totally different and at the end of the day for fish welfare and husbandry and good fish care is just having a tank that gives provides everything they kind of need whether it's hiding spaces a good diet a good water quality and i think conductivity and stuff matters a lot more than whether it's got tannins in the water or it doesn't um because there's many black water fishes that are kept in white water in the aquariums and they do it's kind of Black water is this kind of niche thing in freshwater habitat, so it's a little bit more complex and we don't really have the science because it's not a simple science, if you get what I mean, because we've got different compounds, we've got different ways of them um, just having different um, uptake and then also thinking about whether it's, um, there's the other, not just tannic acid compounds, but other compounds. So let's not just put, let's not promote black water as the pinnacle of fish keeping and the only way to keep freshwater fishes naturally because it's not. There's many different types of biotopes and habitats that would be good to replicate and botanicals are can be great. They can be, 
uh, give a different landscape, but they're not the end all and be all. Especially, there is kind of better to research the individual plants and then you know a little bit more anyway. So hopefully this video is helpful and adds a little bit more to a discussion rather than just blindly promoting something. Um, and I'm not saying that they're bad entirely, it's just a little bit more complex than they're just good. And I think it's great to add different complexities to a fish tank, um, such as um, different landscapes, different uh, di substrates, whether you're adding some sort of botanical things to make, give different enrichment. But it's just worth thinking a little bit more, especially um, as you get a bit more into fish keeping anyway. So anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget we have a Discord server um, where we discuss anything sort of more scientific in the hobby or more advanced fish keeping or topics like that. If you like my videos, please comment, like and subscribe and goodbye.